Alright, today we'll be checking out this electric mountain bike and it's the Go Tiger Sport. It was on sale for around $600 Canadian and I had it for about half a year so I had some time to test it to see how it really performed. It came with some Billy Goat tires, a big 36 volt 12.5 amp hour battery with a 450 watt hub motor. It didn't come with a key but the battery is removable. There's also this fairly bright forward facing flashlight. It came with a basic Shimano shifter set and a 3x7 setup. So it has pretty basic parts but I think most of the value is in the battery and the motor. To turn it on all you gotta do is hold the power button. To turn on the light you just press the power button once and the flashlight turns on and you can also cycle through the modes for the different speeds. When there are no lights on it means that you can fully control the bike with just the throttle. This bike can hit about 45 kilometers per hour but it doesn't have regenerative braking. So a couple things about this bike before I take it out on a trail ride. The brakes came reverse. So the front brake is on the right side and the rear brake is on the left. When I think it's usually the other way around for a bicycle. So the first thing we're going to do is shift them back around to get the braking back in order. I'm going to start by unraveling this wire harness thing. Then I'll unscrew these two things and swap their spots. I loosened the wire from here, so I had the slack to release the clip here. That's one wire out, and that's the second wire out. Now all that's left to do is swap their spots. Perfect, they're in their place, so now all I have to do is tighten back the bottom and line everything up. Perfect, everything's back in order. Time to just quickly tune everything up a little bit. And this one's already tight, so now we're good to go. The last thing we have to work on is the loose bracket on this bike. The bike did originally come with the loose bracket and it left it like that for a year. So hopefully no damage was caused. Now I got the spacers and the handlebars off, so we'll see why the bearing was loose. It doesn't look like there's damage or anything, so I think the person that assembled the bike just didn't tighten it good enough. I'm just going to reassemble it and hopefully the problem is fixed. I finally got it back together. I left out one of the spacers because there's actually a gigantic gap under here. I thought it might help if it fit a little better. But anyways, everything is tightened and there's actually no wobble anymore, which is a good sign. One of the things I discovered was that this wire would sometimes wrap around the light. And that would prevent you from turning left properly. So I think it's just missing a zip tie. After putting the zip tie and those cable wire wrap thingies back on, the bike seems ready to go. Alright, everything is ready to go. So now it's time to head to the trail. The bike has a pretty smooth ride and with the manual mode I don't even have to pedal at all. I usually prefer riding in this mode because when you do use the pedal modes the bike will always try to reach the top speed of that mode so you wouldn't really get full control of the bike's speed. Okay we made it to the trail and the first thing I'm going to do is that hill behind me over there. We're going to see if this bike can help me up the hill without me pedaling. Usually I would have to use momentum or struggle to pedal up but sometimes I end up walking up. But with this new electric assist, let's see if we can just go up without pedaling. The bike almost made it, but at the end it didn't have enough torque to help me up the hill. So I still ended up walking the last portion of the hill. Since it almost made it up with no pedaling, I'll try again, but this time with a little bit of pedaling. And it made it perfectly fine. Anyways, it's time to head back down and we'll see if the bike can handle the incline and a tiny little jump. The bike does feel a little sketchy on these bumpy paths because there are rattles coming out of everywhere and I even had to retighten the flashlight. So I wouldn't consider this a quote unquote real mountain bike, but it's still fun to ride. Well, this kick sign is pretty rattly, but I don't want to carry it with me around the trail, so I'm just going to leave it on for now. With that, let's head further into the trail. We're here in the main portion of the trails now and with this new electric power, I'm going to try to do some features that are normally downhill, but I'm going to go uphill instead. The first thing we're going to try is right here, and it's the jump between the trees. Now normally this section would be hit from the top of the hill to the bottom, but since this ramp is shaped the same basically both ways, I'm going to do it backwards. <laughs> so the funniest thing happened when I did the jump backwards, I guess it landed very bad because the battery popped off the frame. So I guess the key lock right here that goes through the bolt did not actually go down, so the battery didn't come locked. But I'm just going to put this battery back on and continue with my ride. 
So we're gonna head further up the trail now to a portion that's pretty rooty and somewhat steep. This is another portion that I usually walk up or if I'm feeling energetic, I try to pedal up. But with this electric bike, I make it up just fine with minimal pedaling. Wow, this is just cheating at this point. The rest of the ride up the hill was pretty easy, so e-bikes really do make a difference. But I did run into another problem almost at the end of the hill. I ended up losing power and I'm not sure why. And that's when I discovered the next problem. And it has to do with this wire right over here. So I think what happened was I turned a little too steep and the wire got wrapped around the torch itself right here. So when I went to turn back to the left, it pulled on the wire really tight and it ended up disconnecting the battery from the wire down over here. Luckily, it is just a port I can plug back in, so I'm just going to do that right now. Okay, never mind. When it did get yanked out, the pins over here actually got yanked at an angle. So now I have to ride the bike back home manually in order to straighten the pins. With that said, I'm going to have to find a way to prevent this from wrapping around the light. But since the cord is unplugged, I'm just going to take the battery off the bike, carry it in my bag, and ride this bike like a normal bike. The rest of the ride down was pretty smooth. It rode a lot lighter since the battery was off the bike now. So for now, just enjoy the rattle of the bike as I make my way down. All right, we made it in one piece. So final thoughts on the Go Tiger Sport Bike. This bike was definitely fun to ride because of the electric assist. But I wouldn't recommend taking this on any rough trails. But if you do take it on a trail, make sure your battery is locked. This wire does not wrap around the flashlight. And to take the kickstand off. Other than that, the bike seemed to hold up pretty well. The bracket here is still tight. And so the bike held up pretty well. Anyways, this marks the end of this video and test ride on the Go Tiger bike. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video.